In this video, we are going to look at the libraries feature inside of Photoshop and also inside of other programs as well, but we're specifically looking at the Photoshop Lightroom versions of the Adobe Creative Cloud. My name is Matt Klaskowski. This video is just a continuation of a series I'm doing called How to Get the Most from Your Adobe Photography Subscription. So $9.99 a month gets you a lot of cool stuff. Head up here to the window menu. I've got Photoshop open and you come down here, you're gonna see a section called Libraries. That's gonna take you to, in fact, I just closed it by clicking on it. Let's open it back up. It's gonna take you to this libraries panel over here. And in here, you'll see that I've already got some things saved inside here. So let's, let's very quickly show you an example, and then we'll dive into a few more details about how it would be useful. But essentially, this libraries is linked to your Adobe Creative Cloud account. Things you put into these libraries will automatically sync up to the cloud and then be available on any device, whether it's a computer, whether it's a tablet, a phone, whatever, any device that you have hooked up to the Creative Cloud as well. So in this case here, I've got a, uh, I've got a little font signature thing I did. I actually, I did a course called the, the Photographer's Logo and Watermark course, and I did it mainly because my signature's horrible. But like I printed, I made a print for my brother and framed it and everything, and if I signed it, anybody that walked into his place would look at it and, and just think it was somebody scribbled on a thing. But because I did something similar to this, it's a conversation starter. You know, people walk in, oh, your brother's a photographer and this and that. And so I, I, I like it. It's, it's, it works for me. It worked for a lot of people. But anyway, the whole point being is, is I just made a, a couple of layers here. That's why you see this little signature thing. And what I'm going to do is they're actually in a group. I'm just going to take that group and use the move tool and drag it over into my libraries panel. And then you're going to see it shows up right up at the top here. And I can double click and rename it and I can just call it, you know, Matt K signature, name it to whatever I want it to. And so now it lives in my libraries. It's actually syncing with the creative cloud. You can even see a little cloud icon down here and you can see next to it a, an eye, a little thing on it. It's probably very, very tiny, but how much space it is currently taking up inside of your Adobe Creative Cloud account. And yes, things in here do count against your Creative Cloud account. So say back in video number one, where I showed you how to make an online gallery, just a very quick online gallery, and you can share from Lightroom to make a, a link that doesn't co go against your Creative Cloud account. But uh, or those galleries don't go against your account, but something like this does. So now what I would do is I would go open up another photo and then I could go over to my libraries panel and just take it and drag it out, hit enter return, even go into free transform, make it a little bit smaller, something like that. If it's black and I want it to be white, all I've got to do is press command or control and the letter I for invert and that'll switch white to black. And then again, I can go in here and maybe uh, make that a little bit smaller. Maybe I'd even tuck it into the bottom left-hand corner like that. Okay, so that's that's essentially how we can use this libraries feature. We can obviously do more things with it, which we'll go over in just a second here. All right, so uh, let's switch over to a different photo and just to uh, take a quick lay of the land inside your libraries panel. So you've got your your library up here and you've got various libraries that you can create. Uh, you can view by type or you can view by group. So you could see here, I group things together. A group is essentially just a folder, which you could create uh, just by clicking on your little icon down here. And I created a group for brushes. I created a group for textures. And what I did is I just dragged in uh, 10 or 12 uh, good quality texture files that I use often. So I drag them into my library. And that way, if I'm on my desktop, if I'm on my laptop, if I'm on my iPad, uh, wherever I am, I have access to these things because they all get put up into my Adobe Creative Cloud account. So I've got a texture file here. If you do a search on my blog at mattk.com for calendar uh, presets or templates, you can see I created some calendar templates here and I'll just drag one out onto the image there. But if I'm ever doing a, a quick calendar layout of sorts, I've got these right at my hand. Like I don't have to do anything to get them. I don't have to go poking around through folders or anything like that. So it's not saying you can't organize these things on your computer. You can. It's just, this is just a different, easier way, I think, to have all these things located uh, right inside of the program that you're actually using. Okay. Uh, the next thing you want to see here. So just drag and drop things in here. You can see there's a little plus icon in the bottom. You could save colors in here. 
um, you could save graphics. As you saw, I did texture files and JPEGs and logos. I've got my, my mattk.com logo in there. It was just a PNG file that I dragged in. Um, and then you can create from image. We're going to cover that in another video because there's another pretty cool feature that um, comes with Adobe that a lot of people don't know about. But you could go in here. You could you could drag all the sky's the limit. You know, if you get, give it a try. If it doesn't work, it won't work. All right. Don't send me an email like, hey, Matt, I tried to drag a brush in there. It doesn't work. That means you can't drag a brush in there. But if you, if, if you can drag it in and it shows up inside of there, guess what? It works. Okay, so next thing here, we're going to head up to the, the libraries panel at the top there. And if you scroll over to the right of that, there's a tiny, tiny little icon. When you click on it, it gives you a lot of different information inside of here that you can do. So you can export these libraries. If somebody gave you a library, you can import, you can hit collaborate. You can actually click on here and hit share link. And that's going to bring up a page where you can link. I've blurred out the link because I don't want all of you to see all of my library and logos and graphics, but uh, you can you can share a link of your library to, to with somebody else who can view the content. So you can share libraries between Creative Cloud users and, and let other people have access to uh, some of your stuff inside of there as well. OK, um, now it brings you to a web page called assets.adobe.com like all of these things that I'm talking about, all right, like portfolio.adobe.com or lightroom.adobe.com, you've got to be logged into your account. And I, I, I've gotten a lot of questions in this series from people that, you know, we're going to go back here to my library. This is going to take me to the, the homepage here. But I've gotten a lot of questions from people that say, hey, I'm not seeing what you see. I just see a sales page. You're not logged in. You've got to be logged in with the same account that you're logged in to Photoshop and Lightroom with, okay? So you might have to reset your password if you forgot it, but you've got to be logged in to see this stuff, all right? So you can see all of your libraries online too, okay? Adobe gives you access to see these through the, through the assets.adobe.com website if you wanted to. And then the last place that I'm going to show you is the Adobe Creative Cloud Updater. Now, it is an icon in my taskbar up here at the very, very top. It could be an icon in your taskbar. I can't guarantee what you've turned on, what you've turned off on your computer. So what I'll tell you is if you don't see in your taskbar, I believe the Max is up here. I believe a PCs might be down here. Um, if you don't see that little Creative Cloud icon, that little Adobe icon up there, go to your programs or your applications files folder, the, the folder that holds all of the programs on your computer. Again, I can't help you find it. You've got to find it on your computer. And it's called Creative Cloud. So you can launch it right from there. But this is your hub. This is your hub to, to basically all things in your Adobe account. So I'm under the apps section here. Okay. If we go over here toward the middle, you can see here's all the desktop apps that I have access to. And I might have a different subscription than, than you. I've got, so if you've just got the photography plan, you're not going to see all of these things. Then you can see all of their mobile apps and then you can click here and you can see their web apps as well. So you can see all of the Adobe apps inside of there. But more importantly, next to apps is your work. And that's going to take you to your library. So this is just a different way for me to view my library. That's it. It's the same library. It's the same thing that I was looking at through Photoshop. It's just in a different interface. That, that's, that's all there is to it. So I can go in here and take a look through, uh, click on a couple of these icons and you'll see, you can even see, you know, if there's any library shared with you, you can look on the, there's people that freely share them out there in the creative cloud that you can go and have access to their libraries. So uh, again, that's, you know, more wanted to, I, I more wanted to show you, I think from a Photoshop perspective, I think this can be pretty useful. If you've got, like I had here, a signature, um, and I'm going to show you something in a second really cool that you can do with these libraries too that has nothing to do with graphics, but if you've got a signature or logo or files you use often, this is a good place to put them. Now, let's look at one more thing. So I'm going to go over here to my adjustments panel, and I'm going to add a 3D color lookup table adjustment. And I'm going to choose, let's go with crisp warm. That's a, that's a good fun one. We can even reduce the opacity a little bit. So it's just a, it's just a, a, a lot that you can apply. It's like a preset. Don't, don't get caught up in the name of it. It's just like a preset. Um, your computer won't explode if you use a preset. It won't explode if you use one of these either. So uh, two different ways to do the same thing. But 
it's got a layer here. Well, I'm gonna go over here to this libraries panel and I'm gonna drag this over into the panel. Look at that. It called it, it's it, it put it into my libraries panel and I can rename it and I can call it crisp warm LUT. All right, so now it's in there. Let's go ahead and delete that for a second here. Now, here's the trick to using it again, because you think like you think like a logo, I can just drag a logo out and I, and I can't do that with this. If I just drag this out, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do what we want it to do. So what we have to do here is right click on it. When we're on the image, we're ready to use it. Right click on it and then choose place layers. And that will place that layer, even the opacity that I had it set to, it'll place that layer right onto my document. Pretty cool stuff. So let's go and let's add another one here. Let's go to a curves adjustment layer and let's just add a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a curve to this. Again, I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to, to make art here. I don't think this necessarily looks very good, but we'll go with it. So now I've got two of them here. Well, I'm gonna click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one. So they're both targeted. Go over here to libraries and drag this in. So you see it's created an option for it here. And let's just double click and we'll call this uh, LUT plus curves, All right? So now let's go back to our image here and delete those layers. Again, I can't just drag and drop it. I've got to right click on it, choose place layers, and look at that. It's gonna place both of those layers on there. So it's almost like a different way to create a preset if you're using adjustment layers. Now, I'm mostly probably gonna be applying presets inside of Lightroom and Photoshop, but everybody's got a different way of working. If this is the way you work, it's totally okay. And if you've got adjustment layers that you like to do things, this can be a really cool and powerful way to save some of those things. So uh, just look at it as a different workflow, not necessarily a workflow you have to do, but again, the sky's the limit on the things that you could start to drag in to this little libraries panel. They get stored in your Adobe Creative Cloud account and then you have access to them, whether it's your desktop, whether it's your laptop, if you happen to be using Photoshop on the iPad, whatever it happens to be, you'll now have access to your libraries and all of the things that you put inside of there.